I've been living here on the top floor of a three-story building right outside of Boston for the past few years. And one thing I've noticed is that from this wooden deck, which I'm on right now, it's south facing. And I have a really good view of the planets when they're up and setting in the early part of the night. And I've often just, you know, taken a quick look at Jupiter's moons through binoculars, but for some reason, it's never occurred to me to bring out my 10 inch Dobsonian telescope, uh, which is right here. Well, the other day I changed that and I have to admit it, it was sort of frustrating because uh, due to this being an old wooden deck on the third floor, if I just moved a muscle, <laughs> the whole view through the eyepiece was violently shaking for several seconds uh, before calming down. And that's because when you're very uh, magnified, like you would be with a big telescope and an eyepiece, any small vibration or movement will have a huge impact on the view. Um, but with enough practice at saying like super still and just, uh, you know, just really taking my time, I, I did get it to work and I observed the planets visually for about 10 minutes before I really wanted to try to photograph them. And I have a bunch of different cameras I could have used and in some ways the best would have been one of those like small sensor guide cams or planetary cameras from QHY or ZWO. And I have some of those. They capture frames very quickly. Uh, they can do high frame rate because they go right to the computer and they're using a small sensor. But keep in mind, this telescope has no motors. Uh, it's, it's, I have to manually recenter the planets to get them onto the camera sensor. And then the planet will leave the camera sensor just after a couple seconds. So what I'm really trying to do just very short bursts of video. And so for this, I think the DSLR is a better choice. I have this old Canon DSLR, the 60D, that has a very interesting set of video modes, including one that crops into just 640 by 480 pixels into the center of the sensor in a one-to-one -one crop mode. And that's ideal for planetary, since it, it's, it should give us much sharper results with fewer artifacts than a normal video mode, which is taking the whole sensor area and compressing it down to a standard HD or 4K frame size. But I didn't uh, want to start in that special crop mode because then I would have had the exact same problem of using like a small QHY or ZWO sensor. Instead, I get the planet all framed up and centered in one of the other video modes that's using the whole sensor. And this way it's much easier to find the planet and then I just try to quickly switch to the crop mode and record a very short video before the planet leaves the frame. Now, doing that while also not shaking anything was really, really challenging. And so you can see many of my attempts here did not really work out so well, but I did have a few attempts where I think I got something usable. Um, well, at least considering how janky this whole setup was. If we can get any surface detail on the planets after stacking, I'll call this whole experiment a success. And I should mention this telescope is the Skywatcher 250P flex tube collapsible Dobsonian. You've probably seen it in the background of most of my videos. It has a focal length of 1200 millimeters, a focal ratio of f4.7, but I was using a two and a half times Barlow lens attached to my DSLR with a T adapter here. And so that puts me at an effective focal length of something like 3000 millimeters at f12. I do have to admit that I forgot to collimate the telescope, uh, which shows you how rusty I am at using reflectors. Um, but this is just for fun. It's just a test run to see how well this works. So I'm not expecting too much. But the last part of this video, I'll show you how we take these short videos that I made on the DSLR and process them with free Windows software to make a usable final image. Okay, I've transferred uh, the best movie that I could find of Jupiter and of Saturn onto my computer here. And then I'm just going to drag it into PIP, which is, stands for Planetary Imaging Preprocessor. And I'm just gonna make this really simple. I'm just going to click on Optimize Options for Planetary right here on the first page. And then that turns on a bunch of stuff that I want for pre-processing a planetary movie like this. So it's going to center object in each frame of the video, which is something that I want to do. It's going to do auto object detection. Um, if I test this, you can see there it's finding Jupiter, um, even though it's sort of out of frame in that first frame. And if we want, we can turn on enable quality estimation. We can also, of course, do this in auto stacker, which we're gonna be using next. If you do do it here, I would keep it at a pretty high 
percentage of frames kept at this point, and then we can bring that down further in, in Auto Stacker. In Output Options, I'm just going to select a directory. I'll just make a new folder on the desktop for this, call it Jupyter. And then I'll just click on Do Processing and then click Start Processing. Okay. And if I look in this folder now, get rid of this. Here is the original image. And here is the video after Pip has centered it. Okay. And we're going to turn that into something much better, uh, but we have to first stack all of those frames to make it into one image. So we're gonna do that with Auto Stackert. Here we go. So I'll just open up the image that we made with Pip and make sure that it says planet right there. And then I'm going to, you can manually draw control points onto here or alignment points, I mean, um, but I'm just gonna use the place alignment point grid option and then click analyze. Okay, and it estimates the, the quality of all the different frames. I usually have mine set up like this. We're gonna create a TIFF. We're going to um, do different stacks for 30%, 40%, 50% of the total frames. Turn on RGB align. I'm not gonna use drizzle. And then I'm gonna click stack. Okay, that's now done. I'm gonna X out of auto stacker and open up Registax. And in here, I'm just going to click the select button, go back into my Jupyter folder. And now there's these three new folders from Auto Stacker. Let's try the 50% one. Okay, so that's out of Auto Stacker, just the stacked Jupyter. And it looks a lot, um, you know, smoother and less noisy than the video. But now what we're gonna do with this very smooth out uh, stacked image is add wavelets processing. So I'm gonna change the wavelets scheme to dyadic from linear. So we have dyadic, Gaussian, and then I'm going to start turning up these wavelet layers right here. And what I'm trying to do is we're going to, I mean, you can obviously see if I just turn this off and on, that last one was most dramatic. It looks like the, uh, the level three wavelets uh, is where a lot of the detail is in this shot. I don't know if I like what level four is doing, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit can see that um, if I try to add level five, that's going to add a lot of ringing. Um, I might just turn level five and six off. Okay. Um, and then the other thing other than wavelets that I like to do in Registax is if you see any kind of, we already did RGB align in Auto stacker, but it, they also have it in here. If you see any kind of issues there, you can mess around with the red and blue channels. I'm gonna add a little bit of denoising and deringing. Okay, and now I'm gonna click this do all to um, do all of the processing that we just set. And then I'll click save image and save this off as a TIFF file. Okay, and then I'm gonna repeat that same exact process for Saturn. Okay, and then I just uh, brought the two photos into Photoshop and put them together to show the relative size of the two planets and just did a little subtle curves and saturation, um, that's it. Um, so 
pretty straightforward. I, you know, you probably could do a lot more with better data, but uh, this is just a sort of brief introduction to planetary imaging. I'm still learning myself, and uh, this was just sort of a, a practice run for me uh, on the deck. So hope you enjoyed this one. Till next time, this has been Nico Carver, nebulaphotos.com, clear skies.